Okay, so you graduate college as an English major, and you try to audition for Frank Zappa's band. Well, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, uh, I, 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 right. I was, well, I'll get into the story, but I was a senior in, in, in school, and and uh, I went out to see Frank Zappa. And he was playing out in Orange County for some reason, and he said, "Well, it's nice to be here in enemy territory," and uh, and so he, I was a big giant. Zappa fan, man. He was like, he was, I was just, that was it. And so I, I, I saw him, he's walking around the crowd and he, and uh, everybody was talking to him and I waited for my turn to, to, for their space to be opened up. And I went up to him and started talking to him and blah, blah, blah. And, and uh, he's talking about bands and he was, I said, your band. So I used to be a band called, in a band called Rompin' Richie and the Rockin' Rubens. And he turned and he whips around and looks at me and he says, Really, Rock and Rubens? He says, "Are you? What, what do you do?" So I'm, I'm a I'm a singer. She, you any good? So yeah, I'm the best. And so he says, "Well, I'm I'm putting this band together. It's like a satirical '50s band, uh, and uh, if you want to audition for it, uh, you know where the log cabin is. Yeah, everybody in Hollywood knew where the log cabin was. Uh, so come over tomorrow, and uh, you can audition." Great. I got up early in the morning. I think it was still dark when I got there. <laughs> you know, and, and, and he lived in there. And I knocked on the door and he brought me in. And we started talking. And so he, he played me, uh, asked me if any tunes I wanted to play in that ven and venue or in that realm. Named a couple of songs. He played. Um, Ian Underwood came in and play, played the piano, blah, blah, blah. And, we, and he looked at me and he said, well, not bad. He said, give me your address and, and uh, your telephone number and I'll get in touch with you. Cool, Frank Zappa's going to get in touch with me. But I left the country the next day to go to Canada. I didn't come back for three years. So, yeah, you know. Okay, now you left for Canada because you're being drafted to the Vietnam War? I hadn't been drafted yet, but, that, but it was imminent. What happened was that I was a part of the draft resistance movement led by David Harris. I was a very big movement, uh, and he was a very charismatic uh, a leader. And, and so... Uh, uh, General Hersey, who was the director of the draft at the time, said anybody who did any of the things we did, uh, go to the draft center and protest or, or go in the draft center and cause commotion or turn in your draft card or burn your draft card, we'd done all those. And so I said that you'll be immediately drafted, though no, reclassified. I'm still a student going to school, reclassified, uh, drafted, and, and, and sent to the front lines in Vietnam. That was, his, that was his fix. No wonder it's a genius country. And... And uh, so, but at the same time, I had this, my very last semester, I discovered pottery. And it was my quest for being an artist was finally over. I knew what I was going to do because I always knew I was an artist of some kind. I, you know, I just knew it. And, but I didn't have a medium, you know. Uh, and so when I discovered pottery, it was like, all my recessive Mexican genes came <laughs> running out, you know. And so I went up there to be a potter. Okay. So you ditch America. Yeah. You go up to Canada, yeah, and you get a job as a writer, yeah, for Tommy Chung's group. Uh, he, I eventually made my way to Vancouver. I started in in Banff, Calgary, and then yeah, Banff again, and then Vancouver. Met him, and I'd heard about this guy Tommy Chong while he was I was in Calgary because he was from there, and he was this famous guy that wrote a big hit song for Motown. Uh, Does your mama know about me? And it was a big hit tune. Everybody recorded it, uh, and uh, he was this you know cool uh, R and B player. He's Chinese, you know. For okay, well I just heard the name. I got to Vancouver through one way or another. I got introduced to Tommy Chong, and what he was doing, he was running. When he was on the road to the Motown, he uh, saw Improv Theater, the Second City, the committee, the, whatever was out there. And he fell in love with that, and that's what he wanted to do. So he came back to Vancouver, and he started a, an improv group in his family's topless bar. And, <laughs> you know, it's great to be young. <laughs> 